Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome to the final part of the uh, of the 2004 ROH uh, DVD reviews. Uh, the first show was Glory by Honor three. Uh, for Glory by Honor, this is pretty good. I mean, it, it wasn't. Uh, it was a lot better than the previous two, which are pretty much one match shows. This show was a little bit more well rounded, but it didn't have that that match of the year candidate. Uh, Austin Aries and CM Punk. Uh, it was decent, but you know the finish really hurt the match. So. Uh, Alex Shelley versus Brian Danielson. Pretty good st stuff, technically. Basically, Shelley was trying to punk Danielson out. But, uh, you know, I'm kind of disappointed. I thought it could have been a little bit better, but it was still a solid technical match. Um, John Walters and Nigel McGuinness, Nigel McGuinness for the pure title. Definitely have to say, this probably stole the show on here for the pure title. I thought that was good. This was when Nigel uh, was officially an ROH regular starting on this show. So that was pretty cool. Joe versus Doug Williams for the uh, ROH title. Pretty good, but you know, no one really expected Doug Williams to win, so that's what kind of hurt the match. But this is pretty solid stuff. Uh, the tag team title and uh, ultimate endurance match for the in the main event, not main event worthy to tell you the truth. It was pretty good, but uh, for Global Honor, this really should not main event. I guess they uh, Mick Foley came out, this is his first ROH show, so I guess that's pretty much why uh, they booked it like this. So Foley could come out, he came out with the fire extinguisher and basically, you know, just. Uh, save the main event from uh, I don't forget what happens. I guess the Rottweilers are trying to take it over and then he fully just came out and saved the day with the fire extinguisher So that's pretty much what it was uh, Midnight Express reunion production values are pretty bad on the show So that's why that's what hurts the rating, but you know, there's some great matches on here Loki and Jay Lethal This is like Jay Lethal's breakout match. Uh, that was an excellent match Homicide and Nigel For the uh, just a homicide and Nigel match was pretty good. I think this was the only match they had one of the only matches they've had, and, uh, you know, Nigel actually got the upset on Homicide, so that was pretty good. Uh, Generation Next versus uh, John Walters, CM Punk, A. Steel, and Jimmy Jacobs. This is like a Survivor Series elimination match. It was pretty good. It wasn't great, but, uh, you know, Aries and Shelly were the sole survival survivors, and they, they kind of got into a scuffle after the match, so that kind of, like, foreshadowed Shelly leaving Generation Next. Uh, the Midnight Express came out. You know, I, I can't really appreciate the Midnight Express. Uh, the Midnight Express coming out because I didn't watch them uh, growing up. But uh, you know, Samoa Joe and Brian Danson for the ROH title, uh, match of the year candidate, easily maybe one of the top five matches of 2004. I mean, it was just an excellent match. Brian Danson, at times, you really, they really thought he was going to take the belt here, and uh, he went really hard against Joe. And uh, I have to say, this is probably the best Brian Danielson Samoa Joe match in Ring of Honor, which is saying a lot because they did have some pretty good matches. So, um, next up, we get ROH Gold, a rare show, very tough to find, but uh, it's a pretty good show. Homicide and CM Punk opened the show up with a solid opener. Uh, Chad Collier and Jay Lethal, another solid match from Jay Lethal. Jay, you can see Jay Lethal really starting to progress as this year went on. And, uh, you know, Samoa Joe and Rocky Romero, I think. For the ROH title. Now, I don't think anyone thought Rocky Romero had a chance in hell of winning this this belt or the belt or the match. But, uh, you know, they had a lot of chemistry. Romero and Joe actually trained together, I think, at Los Angeles at the dojo. So, uh, it was pretty good, though. They had a lot of chemistry. It was a really good match. But, uh, like I said, I don't think anyone thought Romero had a chance of winning. Uh, the the six-man war, the main event, CM Punk, Ace Steel, and Jimmy Jacobs. Versus uh, Generation Next of Austin Aries, Alex Shelley, and Jack Evans. Pretty solid main event. Went a little bit too long, but this is basically just about helping CM Punk build some momentum into Joe versus Punk 2. Uh, CM Punk actually Pepsi plunged Aries to get the win. So the finish was awesome here. A pretty good six-man tag match. Uh, Joe versus Punk 2. You know, this is not a one-match show. There's some really good stuff on it. You get uh, Jay Lethal versus Del Delirious, which was pretty good. Um... You know, you get the great confrontation between Ricky the Dragon Steamboat and uh, Mick Foley. And they also had another confrontation on ROH Gold, which I forgot to talk about. Um, Roger Strong and Jack Evans and versus Homicide and Rock Romero. Excellent tag match. A lot of people love that match. It's a very good tag team match. And Alex Shelley versus, versus Jimmy Jacobs in the I Quit match was also excellent. Uh, those two actually have been feuding for a long time, as you guys know. They came up together in Detroit. So there is a bit of history there. But Joe versus Punk 2, it's an excellent match. You know, I can see why people aren't blown away by it the first time. And, and like I said, you really have to understand the, the Ring of Honor history and Samoa Joe's title reign. And, and you have to have watched the first Joe versus Punk match to fully uh, appreciate this match. Because it is an excellent match. It's a, 
it goes 60 minutes it's a 60 minute time limit and it's really fast paced they base they really play off the other match it's a lot more fast paced than the other match you know the, the first match with punk applying the headlock but here they basically played off of it and it was just a lot a lot more faster pace and uh, there's some pretty brutal spots in here too with uh, joe slamming punk into the guardrail and you know this is a lot of uh, suicidal dives and uh, the wrestling here just made sense you know it, it didn't it wasn't as dramatic as the third one so you might like the third one better but you know, the first match to earn five stars in the United States since uh, Undertaker vs. Shawn Michaels from uh, the Hell in a Cell match in 1997. So this match did accomplish a lot. And some people say with that, you know, this match might have saved the company. Because it really got the company to start, you know, you know, the company really created a buzz after this. So uh, next up we get Weekend of Thunder Night 1. Uh, it, this is a pretty good show to me. You know, there's some pretty good stuff on here. A, a lot of people would just say it's a one-match show because of Juice and Liger. And Brian Danielson, but you know, that was a really fun match. But there's some other good stuff on here as well. You get Austin Aries and CM Punk was going great, but that the lights actually went off, so that really hurt the match. It really took away from the match for me, but uh, it was pretty good, uh, a lot better than their Glory of Honor match. And then, uh, you know, the match that really stole the show on here was the John Walters and Nigel McGuinness versus Samoa Joe and Jay Lethal. Excellent tag team match. And, uh, yeah, and, and Juice Liger versus Brian Danielson, definitely a dream match. I know Truth Slayer loves this match, but, you know, I think it's a solid four-star match. So, uh, next up we get Weekend of Thunder Night 2. I, I don't think this was as good, to tell you the truth. Um, you know, Chad Collier and Nigel McGuinness opened up the show. Pretty good technical wrestling match. Went to a 15-minute time limit. Um, Jimmy Raven, Jay Lethal, eh, it was all right. Um, the No DQ match, Austin Aries and Roderick Strong versus CM Punk and Ace Steel. Very solid stuff. Great hardcore match. There's some really brutal stuff. Aries actually did a 450 splash and missed Punk, so he, his his uh, his guts went right right onto the ladder. So that was pretty pretty brutal. Um, you know, a lot of the other matches just really dragged. Um, but you know, the, the the main event was a dream match. You know, Samoa Joe and Juice and Liger versus Brian Danielson, a low key excellent tag match. One of the best matches of the year. Uh, really really fun stuff. So definitely check that out if you, if you can. Uh, All-Star Extravaganza 2, one of the best main events in ROH history, we get Samoa Joe versus CM Punk 3, um, I thought this was excellent, arguably the best match in their series, it's debatable, uh, this one was a lot more dramatic, it was a lot more faster paced, I think a lot, a lot of you guys will enjoy this one a lot more, if you didn't like Joe versus Punk 2, uh, really CM Punk got busted open and showed a lot of fighting spirit, and uh, really thought it was amazing. Uh, the near falls were tremendous, and this was just more of a dramatic match. So you know, uh, this a lot of people do prefer this as the best Joe versus Punk match. So uh, definitely check this out. But you know, my problem with the show is it went a little bit too long. So uh, there's a lot of good stuff on the show, but really did not need to be five hours long. Um, you know, Austin Aries and Low Key number one contenders match for final battle, 20 minute time limit, very disappointing. Aries are great here. There's a lot of good stuff for this match, but you know. Loki was just being an asshole the whole match. He just wrestled a very methodical style, and uh, you know, we went to. He did not want five more minutes, so he basically screwed the fans. So, you know, that was kind of disappointing. And uh, Brian Dennis and Homicide was kind of disappointing. So everything on the, on this show was not that good, to tell you the truth. Really tough to sit through, but you know, the main event is one of the best matches in ROH history. So pick it up for the main event. Uh, next up, we get Final Battle 2004. I thought this was uh, excellent main event. Like I said, probably the best moment in ROH history with uh, you know Austin Aries finally dethroning Samoa Joe to become the ROH champion, and uh, like you know, like I said, this is this this is definitely how you build up a champion in Samoa Joe, and this is how you do a, a title change. You know, Aries was hot at the time; he deserved to win the belt, and it was fresh and it was something different. And uh, the fans really witnessed you know one of the best, mo in my opinion, this is one of the best moments ever. You know, just. Definitely check this match out. This is a must-have for any Ring of Honor fan because of that match. But, uh, you know, the, the other thing about the show was uh, Austin Aries actually kicked Alex Shelley out of Generation Next because, you know, he was uh, basically, you know, he, he took time off to, to, to wrestle with T for TNA. So I guess TNA needed him for a couple shows. So uh, basically Aries is pissed off about that. So they kicked Aries and Roderick Strong kicked Shelley out of Generation Next. Uh, you know, everything else, else was, uh, was pretty mediocre. Not, this was not that great. 
uh, the Yummy Pro is not that great. You know, it, it was pretty weak. But, you know, I, I would say I would give this a good score just because of Austin Aries and Samoa Joe for being one of the best matches and one of the best moments in ROH history. All right, so that's it.